Hi, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of The Startup Show, brought to you, as always, by Inc. Authority. My name is Trevor Rowley. I'm your host. Today, we're going to talk about a very important topic for business owners, because all business owners, whether we're brand new or whether we've been around for a long time, we are concerned about our customers. We work really, really hard to bring them in the front door, and we would hate to see them leave out the back door. And sometimes they leave because they're unhappy, or maybe they didn't uh, have their expectations met. And so having and building a great customer support team and delivering the wow to customers, providing exceptional customer service is always important. We've brought an expert to tell us about customer service today. Teo Purcell, welcome to the program today. Happy to have you. Thank you, Trevor. So Teo, you're a member of our customer support team at Inc. Authority. And by the way, we have a fantastic support team here. Um, I think volumes is spoken about our customer support team and our team in general by the 18,000 plus reviews that are found on Trustpilot that sing the praises of the organization. But, uh, you know, we talk to new startup owners uh, of businesses around the country every day, and uh, all of them are concerned about customer service. And they say something like, hey, uh, you guys seem to provide outstanding customer service. What's the secret? And so uh, maybe we'll start out just by asking detail, what are some of the best practices for providing customer service to customers, regardless of the type of industry? Well, <clears throat> a few basics are going to be like being courteous and professional, of course. Um, active listening is a big deal because, you know, typically when they come on the customer support, they're going to have something they need to attend to, either an issue or, you know, just something they need to adjust. So, you know, you got to make sure to listen attentively. And, of course, reiteration, you know, making them feel validated in their, you know, listening in their, or in their comments, rather. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, and, of course, if you have to touch them back again, follow-up is huge. Making sure that you're diligent about your calendar, you know, scheduling everything perfectly and following up when needed. So, I think you made a really brilliant point there, which is communication. Communication is always the key when providing customer support, right? Um, because somebody calls in, maybe there's a misunderstanding, maybe they don't um, understand what it is that they're even doing with the product or service, uh, but they need help, and they're asking for somebody to give them some help. And so asking the right questions, probing, getting at the heart of the issue, showing some empathy with the customer, because typically the questions that people have, they're not the first ones that have those questions, letting them know they're not alone, and then calming, reassuring them, helping them find the way, guiding them, holding them by, them by the hand, solving their problem. And I think then you said the follow-up is key, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, follow-up is huge. I mean, realistically, if a customer or a client rather calls in and they have a problem, and uh, they get a good satisfactory resolution to that, and but that's the last interaction they ever have. They could feel forgotten about or you know anything of that nature. You want to follow up, make sure that everything is solved correctly. Um, just show that you're there for them. Yeah, you know, in my experience, and you know, I've run a number of businesses over you know 30 plus years. Customers just want to be heard, right? And um, sometimes they want to be heard because they have a problem. Sometimes they want to be heard because they want to sing people's praises, and that's okay too, right? Certainly, certainly. And, and I think every new business owner that we talk to at Inc. Authority you know, their goal is to wow their customers. And at Inc. Authority, that's one of our mantras is deliver the wow, which to us at Inc. Authority, as far as customer service is concerned, means every touch that we have with somebody, whether it's on our website, whether they're calling into our hotline to talk to a member of our customer support team, whether they're talking to a business advisor, whatever it happens to be, we want that person to walk away from that touch saying, wow, that was so much more than I expected. I got so much more out of that than I thought I was going to get. And I think that's the goal that business owners have that are coming to us that are starting their new business too. They want to have that same sort of experience for their customers, creating great client experience. And to create great client experiences, it's very intentional, right? So, you know, speak about your team for just a moment, your customer support team. What are some of the intentional things that you guys do to create a culture, an environment that allows your customer support agents to uh, solve people's problems, feel empowered, have a positive attitude and take care of customers. Certainly, certainly. Well, important or the most important thing, at least for my frame of reference, is to kind of put themselves in the client's shoes at the point of entry. I mean, they're calling in. I mean, they might be frustrated, and yeah, as you know, a service rep, you might be like, "Oh man, I have to deal with this client." And they're you know frustrated, whatever the case may be. But you take a moment to ground yourself in the frame, you know, why they're calling in. It's easy to kind of start thinking with empathy and using that to pursue a resolution, so they can actually you know be happy after your engagement. Yeah. Uh, so I mean. I think if I'm a business owner starting today and I'm looking to build a solid customer support team to take care of these customers that I'm working so hard to bring in the front door, I'm looking for individuals who have compassion, people that are great communicators, 
people that are naturally curious so that when those customers call or when they have issues or concerns or questions, that there's somebody there who's going to take the time to, to drill down and find out what it is. And then somebody who can problem solve and take care of that customer, make sure that they're continuing down the right path. Because if you're able to do that, that customer is going to stay with you forever and ever. And if they have needs for other products and services, they're going to come back to you again and again, because you've established this relationship of trust. And so I think, you know, creating a, an environment of excellent customer service starts really with the hiring process. Would you agree? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, you know, you don't want to have anybody that's too passive or anything of that nature, because, um, you know, at the end of the day, communication should be done with confidence. And if you're assured in the, you know, the service you offer or the products that you have and that sort of thing, it's easy to be confident about it. And that, is, that again, reassures your clients as yeah. well. So, I mean, a great customer support agent is going to have confidence, is going to be a great communicator, and it's going to generally like people. Let's face it, not everybody likes people. <laughs> and so finding somebody who likes other people, likes socializing, likes interacting with them, goes a long way towards creating that great client experience. Now, um, what about this concept of empowering a customer support agent to be able to solve problems? Um, you know, sometimes I've had experiences where I've needed some help from some other business that I'm, um, you know, interacting with. And sometimes I talk to somebody and the answer is, well, I'm not authorized to take care of that, or I don't know how to take care of that. You know, how do you overcome that problem so that a customer feels like not only they're being heard, but they're not being passed around from person to person to get their problem solved? Well, so one thing I reinforce constantly with everybody is just Let's make sure that we're reaching out, and, you know, not only from, like by calling or leaving a voicemail, that sort of thing, if we're not reaching them in that contact, but also by following by email, that sort of thing. Um, so realistically, I think uh, training is going to be the biggest part of it. They are reinforcing, you know, basically what they need to fall back on if something goes awry or, you know, if there's a situation present, um, thereby allowing your reps to be more confident and thereby provide, provide a better service level to the client. Yeah. I think you're exactly right because... You know, we can't just hire somebody and say, hey, you're a customer support, just take care of people, whoever answers, whoever calls, take care of them, right? There's much more to it. There's training, um, knowing what are the questions that the customers might have, and then training that agent so they're able to properly address those things. And if there is a problem, you know, empowering them and training them how to handle that problem and overcome that adversity, right? Yep. Now, if there is a situation where the person cannot solve the problem, then how do they actually transfer that to another person? so that it can be taken care of without the customer feeling like they're being passed around and handed around. Because there's a good way to do it and there's a bad way to do it. Sir. And again, going back to the very beginning, communication's the key, right? Exactly. Just being honest and transparent. And if you're not the person who can actually solve the problem, assuring them that I'm getting you to the person who can solve the problem and that they can indeed solve the problem. And then the follow-up, right? Making sure that everything is taken care of. If I'm a, cust a customer support agent, I'm going to do everything in my power to take care of the customer's problem. If I can't, and I send it to somebody else who can what I still can do is follow up with that individual later on. And I, maybe it's an email, maybe it's another phone call, just say, hey, just circling back around. I know that I transferred you to Teo, for example. Just want to make sure everything was taken care of. Yep. And it's a nice way to kind of tie everything up in a bow. And I think that the customer feels extra special knowing that not only did that first person, maybe he couldn't solve my problem, but he made sure my problem was solved and he followed up with me. It's a great way to build trust between your organization and the customer is by that extra layer, that extra step of communication from customer service. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, customers come in all shapes and all sizes and in all levels of understanding. Um, you know, what do you do if somebody's difficult? How does a customer support agent help somebody who might be difficult? Well, so, I mean, being patient, and like I said, active listening and that reassurance are going to be the biggest, um, you know, tools in your belt for a difficult customer. Uh, because first off, they're going to want to tell you two or three times what their crop is, you know, or their, you know, what what they want to adjust and that sort of thing. Um, and they're not going to listen always first time to what you tell them in response. So just be patient, listen actively, and find the best way to answer their questions with sympathy, with empathy, not with sympathy, rather, but with empathy. Yeah. Um, and assure them that, you know, we're going to find a solution to this yeah. you know, one way or the other. And just walking them through that process, right? Because <laughs> I think so often I've felt this way when I've had a problem and I've called a business, I've always felt like, man, it feels like I'm getting ready for a fight, right? Right. And I'm going to call in and I kind of feel like that the business is going to respond saying, no, you're not right or something like that. And so I'm kind of prepared to build that wall. And so great customer support, I think immediately disarms that person, right? Somebody calls in with a concern. And I think there's a real pattern to overcoming problems. One of those, uh, the first part of that pattern is you listen, as you said, right? 
And then I think repeating back to them the issue, um, that shows part of that active listening. You know, if you called me, for example, and you had a problem, I might say after you relayed your problem, I say, Teo, if I'm hearing you correctly, the problem that you're having is, and boom, 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 right? Is that correct? So uh, that way they can say, yes, you're understanding me completely, or, or no, that's not quite it. You misunderstood a little piece, and then they can redirect, but we want to make sure we get at the heart of the matter. And then next, after I've understood fully what it is and, and repeated that back to them, saying something like, hey, I, I just want you to know that, you know, that's a common misunderstanding or that's a common problem. You're not the only one who's ever been in this boat. And that kind of disarms them a little bit too. And then I say something like, I'm here to get this taken care of for you. I'm going to solve your problem, right? Here's what we're going to do. Step one, step two, step three. And I take them right through it. And then at the end of it, I ask them, I say, does that solve the problem for you? Have I helped you? Have I gotten you through that? And if it's a yes, it's great. Hey, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for letting me take care of you. If it's not, then I find out what part am I missing? And I take the next step to handle them as well. And that creates great client experiences. Once you create great client experiences, you've created a client for life, right? So Teo, uh, are there any stories, any customers you've interacted with that maybe you can share with us about how you helped a customer overcome a problem that can maybe be an example for our listeners today? Well, I mean, first thing comes to mind actually happened a little earlier today. Um, I was dealing with a, a little more escalated client who uh, had some uh, some incorrect information that managed to get through on their filing, and they wanted to make sure that you know they were heard that it was you know an issue that needed to be resolved immediately. So, you know, through the process, you know, I'm happy to help you. Like, let me hear you from your own words what the problem is, so that I can understand both frame the reference and get this problem solved the best way for you. And then, you know, of course, you're gonna hear everything that they have to say and yep. make, make sure that they've exhausted themselves first, of course, you know, before you jump into the solution. But I mean, um, basically what, you know, they, they just needed to be heard. And then I assure them that it's a simple fix. Um, you know, I'm going to take care of this for you. And of course I followed up with them right after the phone call, just to make sure that they had received everything that I'd said and that everything was kosher from there. Yeah. So you follow that pattern, right? You, you listen to them, disarmed them a little bit, let them know everything was going to be okay. You were going to solve the problem. You solved the problem. And once they understood that, they recognized the problem was solved and you just went forward. So fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us today, Teo. Pleasure to have you on the program as always. You know, customer support and how to service customers, I think, is a critical piece of operating a successful business. And that's what the show is about on The Startup Show is helping business owners uh, have successful businesses. I want to thank you all for joining us again for this episode of The Startup Show brought to you by Inc. Authority. If you'd like to speak with Teo or a member of the customer support team, please reach out to us either online or by telephone. And while you're here, uh, go ahead and hit the like button and make sure that you have the notification bell on so that you don't miss any of our future content. Uh, this is Trevor Rowley signing off from this episode, asking you to be safe, be smart, make good decisions, and be successful. 